Society, remember those who lived and died fighting to protect the dignity and the freedom of mankind. Let our spirits be proud of them, let our hearts be compassionate, and our minds clear and determined in giving them honor and respect. And let us be dependent on the loving kindness of the Lord our God. As we remember the departed, let us be true soldiers in war and on peace. Let us be courageous protectors and true guardians of freedom. Let us be the true masters of brotherly love. O Lord, o Lord guide us in the way of moral responsibility. Enlighten us who are true believers in ethics and justice. Let this day be a day of commemoration and honor to those who sacrifice their lives in order to give us liberty and our nation security. Remember them, O oh Lord, in your mercy and have compassion on us. Make us as a generation of wisdom, discipline, and faith. We pray in your holy name. Amen. Time when when uh, many of these calls for help off the coast here, you know, went went unanswered. Uh, it's very treacherous right off the coast here. Uh, many lives are lost in the in the cold Pacific Ocean, and uh, you know if you wrecked along these rocky headlands or beach uh, of Point Reyes, your fate was was uh, most often an unexpected burial at sea. In 1871, the United States Life Saving Service provided uh, was established to let's see was established to provide hope for those whose fate was once sealed uh, by the pounding oceans, and uh, it was a model agency actually for. Uh, it's surfmen. Let's see. It was a model agency, and its surfmen were earn a place in the hearts of Americans and their and their feats of bravery. Um, in 1890, along the beach, right down there, as I mentioned earlier, the Point Reyes Life Saving Station uh, opened with a crew of eight and a seasoned keeper. So that's kind of that keeper. That station is kind of today's modern day chief. And uh, and when they moved over there, the, there was a chief that was in charge of that new motor lifeboat station as well. Uh, although. Then it wasn't called a chief because the chief position wasn't created then. Uh, but that was uh, so that there was a crew of eight, and that beach was known for its notorious pounding surf and bad weather. Their positions were poorly paid, difficult, and full of danger. The surfmen patrolled the beaches of Point Reyes with a vigilant eye, looking for shipwreck, shipwrecks and their desperate crews. They walked the beaches day and night with the fog chilling them to the bone and the wind blasting sand at the unprotected skin of their faces. When a wreck was found, the surfmen did what they did best, they saved lives. A shipwrecked mariner, you could be assured that the surfman's presence gave you close to a 99% chance of survival. Equipped with a surf boat and breech, breeches buoys, the keeper would determine the best way to aid those in distress, using a surf boat with eight surfmen rowing and the keeper steering. The crew of the life-saving station would take the imperiled mariners back to shore, but there were times when the boat could not safely reach a wreck. In those instances, the breaches, buoy, and Lyle gun were used. And so a Lyle gun is something that uh, uh, National Park Service showed me at the boat station, which was kind of cool. They, it was just a, uh, almost like a lead line when, when you're out at sea and you're trying to transfer something over. Um, so that, that's kind of interesting, and they pull people back uh, to the beaches there. Uh, the breaches buoy was a life preserver ring with an oversized pair of canvas legs would be then sent to the wreck uh, over that and remove the crew. So um, that's a little history on the life saving service. And I'd like to next call upon, uh, I have three volunteers here who are gonna read you know, what happened to the members that are buried down here. And uh, if, I, if I may ask you to grab one of the flowers in the bags too, and as we depart here, lay it on, on your, on the grave of the person you're reading about. So if you, let's see, if you want to read uh, Fred Carson's and Andrew Anderson, and what happened to them. Said, Died at 12 December, 1891. Approximately 10 a.m., the boat crew was in the act of getting the boat up on the beach when Breaker came in and overturned the boat, injuring both these men. They were taken to the dwelling and a doctor was called, but arrived too late. Thank you. So as we, as we exit here, if we'll lay flowers on there. And uh, the next guy that's buried down there is George Larson. If you wouldn't mind reading pieces, George Larson. George Larson, died 1st of March, 1893, while practicing with his boat in the surf. When the boat overturned, it killed George Larson. He was taken to the dwelling 
soon after the accident, sent for a doctor, but he arrived too late. Paula died 2nd of March, 1891. Corpala complained of having chills and a headache at 6 a.m. 3rd of March, 1891. He was found dead in the bed of it, in his room. The coroner was called and pronounced that Corpala died from hemorrhage of the lung. Thank you. So a lot of these deaths, it sounds like, were you know training or after the the um, the actual rescuing. So very very hazardous job, and, uh, and you know let's let's remember those individuals here today. Um, we're going to close up here. I'd like to uh, also honor all of our other fallen service members, and uh, and then we're going to wrap up with uh, a closing prayer from Lister Johnson again. This Memorial Day, we honor uh, the 13 original colleagues and our forefathers who founded this great nation. To the men who died in the war for independence, those who fell in the War of 1812, to the brave soldiers on both sides, the North and the South, in the Civil War, those shed their blood in the name of hope and freedom in the Great War. For our fathers and sons who died in the terrible battles, terrible battles of World War II, Pearl Harbor, Anzio, Midway, the Bulge, Iwo Jima, Guadalcanal, Normandy, and Berlin. To the men of the 1st Marine Division, who in a rear guard action at the Chosen Reservoir in Korea saved their battalion and the lives of their brother Marines. For the men, brave men and women of our armed forces who died on the fields of fire in Vietnam and whose names will live on forever. Those that have fallen since Vietnam, Desert Storm, Iraqi Freedom, and the countless other combat missions around the world. To God and our families, to the men and women of our armed forces, the arsenal of democracy and the hammer of freedom and to freedom, because without freedom there is no honor. Without honor, we are not Americans. And on this, we vow that as long as this flag flies, we will salute you. And if Oster Johnson, if you wouldn't mind closing out for her. You guys would bow your head for the benediction. <coughs> Almighty and merciful God, we remember before you in this moment our departed comrades. We recall with reverence the good needs they accomplished. We honor these who fought a good fight in a just cause. To those who fought and died in the war for independence, to our brothers and sisters who have fallen in our most recent days in both foreign and domestic lands. Comrades, both in war and in peace, who have served this country with dignity and with honor, may they rest in peace. May we consecrate our hearts and lives to you, our God, and to this, our country, and to the ideals and principles and hopes of those whom we honor, who have, who have served faithfully and are now at rest. In your holy name we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you everyone for coming. Make sure we pay respects on your way out and uh, you'll, you guys will lay those flowers. Thank you.